So if I look at your list, Roundup is way down that list. So is that why we raise plants like corn or soybeans that are specifically Roundup resistant? That is definitely one reason is it is a very, very low toxicity compound. And in fact, when you, you look at most of the studies done, the potential toxicity dose they'll give you will be greater than say 5,000, meaning th that's as far as it had to go and it's, it's much safer than even that. And that's a much potentially safer compound than those everyday compounds that we talked about earlier. Um, and as I mentioned before, instead of having to use multiple products, we can get by uh, with using the glyphosate, which breaks down in the environment very quickly. Uh, it actually doesn't have any residual activity to it. It's going to kill the weeds and the plant it touches, but once it hits in the ground, it becomes inactive and starts breaking down at that point in time. So when you think about animals as well as humans, we, we have mechanisms to get rid of toxic substances. So going back to your aspirin, there are many um, uh, older adults that take a 81 milligram aspirin every single day. I think it's important for them to understand, like just like caffeine, that just consuming caffeine is not going to kill me. It's the dose, the total dose, and it's a, within a day and our body is constantly have, through our liver and kidney have mechanisms to get rid of those toxins. Ab absolutely, the dose is key. And, and that's the thing we always have to remember in that whether we're talking about uh, cattle or people, mammalian species have the ability to break these different products down and they will excrete them. So most of the time we're not having a buildup in our body. So livestock, if they happen to have consumed something that's toxic, they're gonna eliminate that from their system. And uh, so it's not, again, a hazard never really gets to the meat. That's why people say, well, how can you use these particular compounds and not impact the meat? Because it doesn't build up in the meat, it passes through the liver, right? A absolutely. So when we look at any of the products we're using in livestock production, generally speaking, they've gone through a review process by either the FDA, USDA, or EPA. And sometimes, depending on that product, they may have to go through two of the three or all three of those agencies to look at safety. And so they're gonna look at, all right, so how much have we applied to that pasture or how much have we applied to that corn field or that soybean field? And so the first thing they'll do is when we're talking about row crops, there's what we call a pre-harvest interval. And so that pre-harvest interval means we spray it and we have to wait a certain period of time before we can harvest that plant. And what that does is allows that plant to break some of that compound down before we harvest it. And the, um, there will be a level established that, depending on what product we're talking about, it either has to be below this level or none of that product left in that plant at all. So we talked about pre-harvest intervals in row crops like corn and soybean. When we're talking about pastures like this, we'll talk about grazing restrictions. So what that means is once we spray that herbicide on the pasture, depending on the product, it may have zero grazing restriction on it. So we can go ahead and graze right away. Or it may say we can't graze that hay field or pasture for seven or 14 days uh, before we turn cattle back on. Once we turn cattle back on, or once those cattle consume some of that corn that came from that field, they're also going to potentially break down any compounds that were in that original herbicide, or they're gonna excrete them back out. Those products are not gonna be absorbed into the meat or the fat of those animals. And so that's why we don't have to worry about that from a safety standpoint. And I think a, a lot of people don't realize that the same type of testing that those chemicals that you just talked about or those compounds that we use, along with antibiotics and other animal health products, all go through exactly the same scrutiny that human medicine goes through. It costs millions of dollars and, and years of testing before those compounds are allowed to be used in livestock. But first of all, they have to be deemed to be completely safe for use in livestock for the human because they're gonna consume ultimately the products from those animals. And that's absolutely why we see very few new products come on the market is because of all the testing they have to go through in the years and years and millions and millions of dollars to prove the safety of these products before they ever enter the marketplace.